Hi, I'm Edgar, and in my Gaunt's Ghosts model making project, I recently turned my attention to the more arts and craft style rather than the more accepted modeling techniques. I made this one with some masking tape strengthened with super glue, and it came out looking pretty good, with a firmness that suggests it would be quite durable. I also made this one with thin sheet metal, a pie tin, which also came out looking pretty good. Harder to shape, but much more rigid. Well, there is a third type of artsy crafty for model cloaks, and that is to use real fabric. A few months ago, someone suggested to use cheesecloth and soak that in PVA glue. I couldn't find the original comment, but if that was you, post below and I will pin that. Cheesecloth is surprisingly easy to find. I went onto eBay and bought a sample piece for the grand princely sum of 60 pence. And the piece that arrived is pretty sizable, actually. Probably not big enough to do anything with, you know, cheese, the intended use, but could probably do half of the regiment in model form if it comes out well. I noticed straight away that it peels and separates and the threads kind of pull apart, which will prove to be a difficulty in making the cloaks, but once the PVA glue is soaked through it, this will be all sealed together and it's no issue at all. I grabbed my fancy embroidery scissors that I use on paper all the time and then sharpen, and cut out a cloak shape. For this practice piece I went with the very same cloak shape that I've been using for nearly every type of build so far. A tall trapezium with a rounded top and a small neck hole. This neck hole did immediately start to split and separate, and so I had to be very careful with it. But not for long, as I'm going straight into the PVA glue step. I don't need too much as I'm just making the one cloak today, and I'll mix in a little bit of water just to help it soak into the fabric, and yeah, just dunk it in, coat the whole thing. Carefully placing the sodden clump onto the model was pretty easily, all things considered. The PVA is slightly sticky, so it kind of sometimes sits where you put it, and I was able to give it some kind of small basic shape of a flowing cloak. The one thing you might notice here is that the shoulders are kind of sticky-uppy, and pressing them down didn't really work too well whilst it was wet. I did go back to this after a couple of hours when it was partially dry and pressed those down and, as you see later on, that did shape them up a little better. One thing to maybe be careful about is to clean away any PVA glue you get on the details of the model, hands, face, weapons, so on, as that could fill the details in and kind of ruin the look of the model. And you can see here in this oddly color graded section, because my camera decided to reset all of the settings and I didn't check them, uh, once the glue had dried overnight, I trimmed those tatty edges away and the cloak took on a pretty decent shape. Given how the PVA glue uh, sealed the weave in a way, it might actually be a sensible idea to soak the entire piece of material in PVA glue first, and then come back to cut out the cloak shapes when it was dry. And you can even use super glue to attach the cloak to the model. I did use just a spot here to hold the cloak down at the back, and I, that was just to make sure that it wasn't pulling at the front where it was at its thinnest. I have said before that one important step in a crafty option is how it paints. And so I went ahead and painted the rest of the model to get that out of the way, because I just want to show the cloak. If you want to see me paint their Tanith models, I've got over 50 videos painting Tanith models. I just thought I'd start skipping them because it must be getting a little boring. The first and most immediate thing to notice is that this fabric does not take paint in the same way as plastic, metal or resin models do. The first part here, which I painted as if a normal model, just soaked in and didn't spread in the slightest. I experimented and I learned and quickly came to watering down the paint just a little more than I usually would and then pasting it on really really heavily giving it plenty of liquid to soak in which will bring the pigment along with it. This came out alright but I was 
already worried about the detailing. Firstly, the simple highlights, uh, a lighter green on the shoulders and the raised parts of the cloak. This sort of went on like a dry brush, a very wet dry brush. It's kind of an odd way of doing things, but it didn't really give the right impression that I was after. Moving on to the fleckle camo pattern, it was extremely difficult to render dots on a surface that requires being flooded with paint, but I tried and I ended up with kind of patches of different colour, this kind of mottled look, not quite the fleckle pattern that I usually paint, but it is a disrupted pattern and comes out pretty good for camo material. With the model finished now, I can point out the kind of the biggest flaw that I feel that this particular fabric has. I do genuinely think that a real fabric can be used in model making and strengthening and sealing it with PVA glue would be the way to go. Cutting after it's sealed is probably the go-to process just so that your kind of edges are neat and tidy. But the cheesecloth specifically I have here is a very large weave compared to the scale of the model. Whilst it is literally a real fabric, it does not look like fabric in scale, which is kind of an important part of making a scale model. What I kind of need is some opinions on this. Have any of you at home made any model parts with real fabric? Does a finer woven fabric look better? And would this larger weave of material look good as maybe camo netting instead of fabric? I think that last one is a certain maybe something I might have to try. But the model is now done, painted up, and with my low tolerance for quality of 40k models, it is totally going in my army, at least until I find another fabric to replace it with. So thank you everyone who's popped past to watch this video, I hope I've given you some ideas that you don't have to use only specific modelling supplies when modelling. Play around with stuff, sometimes it won't work, but often, sometimes it does. But for now, I'm Edgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.